demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and go through um, what I would normally demo um, in the traditional classroom for lab one parts A and B, um, but I'm going to do it with a little bit different twist. I'm going to go ahead and launch the uh, virtual desktop client so you'll get an idea um, that um, what it looks like to work in this virtual environment and uh, you'll see how the uh, two different drives are available the uh, list of drives that are available on the virtual desktop plus the list of the drives that are available on your current machine first thing i'm going to do is i've launched internet explorer and i have a little shortcut up here for virtual workspace so i'm going to left click on that get a little info message about being updated click ok and I'm going to log on here just as you will log on with my email address, uh, ID and password. Okay. Um, when you have the virtual uh, computer lab client loaded you and you've logged on, you'll come to this screen here. We're going to left click on GIS. And what this should do is uh, make the connection to a virtual desktop in the geospatial research laboratory. So here we are in the research laboratory. You have to answer those default questions so that we know um, you're using our technology in the right way. So this is a virtual desktop. I can do anything on this desktop that I could do um, on my home computer. And uh, to get out of this particular mode, you would just simply click start and log off, but we're not going to do that right now. First thing I want to do is I want to open up the computer so that you can see what's going on here. This is the virtual C drive. This is the drive you're actually working on right now. Um, these are some other drives that are on a computer that would be extremely difficult for you to get a hold of since you're perhaps sitting at home or elsewhere and uh, you couldn't open up those particular drives. These drives down here are drives that are on my um, home laptop. So C Magellan basically is the C drive on my computer at home. And we can take a look at what's on the C drive here. Now what's really neat about all this is that ultimately you're going to be placing a folder on this particular C drive here on the virtual machine and then you're going to zip it up and copy it or you can copy the whole folder onto the C drive of your machine. That way you can move uh, your work around, your lab work, from one computer to another and open it up without having issues. So let's go ahead and minimize that right now and launch Internet Explorer. Now, the thing about virtual um, desktops is that um, they're set up to default back to the default settings of Windows. So we're going to have to get to AUM's website. So it's www.aum.edu, I think. Yep. Maximize this screen. We're going to scroll down. You notice it's a little bit um, jerky, the motion. And it's going to be that way based on your connection speed. We're going to go to Blackboard. And I'm going to sign on Blackboard. My uh, Blackboard landing page might look a little bit different than you. We'll get to one that looks close to yours in a moment here. Uh, if you're in 3950B, you would go here. If you're in 6350, uh, it's down below. These will appear on your landing page a little bit differently. We're going to go ahead and go to 39B. 
And what we're going to do from here is go to the learning modules and download the data that we're going to work with in Lab 1. So I'm going to left click on the learning module. This is it, Topic 1, Introduction to GIS. I'm going to left click on that. And what we want is we want the data, this right here. It might take a while because it's loading this. And once I click on that, you're going to get a pop-up, and we're going to save as. And we want to put it on the computer on the local C drive. But what we want to do is we want to create a new folder. And we're going to name that folder. And this procedure is exactly the same every time you begin working on a lab. It is your surname, so it's Weinmiller and Lab 01. I'm going to open that and I'm going to save into there. You'll get a security scan. Here it says the zip code, uh, uh, the zip download has been completed. Let's go over here. Open up that folder and see if it's in there. Right there it is, Weinmiller Lab 1. Double left click on that, and there's the zip file. I suggest you just minimize um, your internet connections while you're working on these labs until you're sure that the file is not corrupt. Okay, so we so we have a folder on the C drive. You always want to have your lab folder on the C drive of the, of the computer you're working on. All your data goes in that folder. All your work is saved to that folder. You zip that folder up and turn in the folder with all its contents to me by attaching it to a Blackboard uh, message and sending it to me only when it's complete. The reason you do that is I can download that once I get your email, um, unzip it, and I un when I unzip, I get a folder with all its contents in there, and I put it on my C drive. I launch it, and your uh, project, your lab work should work perfectly. So let's see what's inside here. Um, there's a folder called USGS. It's a file folder. You don't know that yet, but I'm telling you right now that this is a ArcInfo uh, data set, and it should be inside a folder inside your lab folder. There are only a few examples of geospatial files that should stay inside folders inside your lab folder. One of them is an ArcInfo file. The second one would be an ArcView shape file. This one is an ArcInfo file. You'll get to know them, so uh, don't feel uncomfortable if you don't if, if you're thinking that well, you know how am I going to recognize this? Don't worry about that. Okay, this is the lab. So let's double click and launch that just to see what that's going to look like. Okay, here's the lab. Uh, we're getting all these messages because um, it's the first time we're launching this. I'll cut it out. Give me a break. Okay. Um, you want to enable editing on this because you're going to ultimately save it back into your folder. This is what the lab looks like. This one is a Word doc, and it has questions. You'll notice that there are some questions here, and you're supposed to put your responses here on the line. And you can type on this particular Word doc. You can also go to the end of this Word doc on the last page, which would be five. You could hit uh, Control Enter at the end of this and add a page. Now you notice Control Enter added a page. It picked up um, this particular outline. We don't need that outline, so just backspace a couple times until you get there. And I'm going to go File. Save as, because I want to save this, inside my folder. And now I'm going to call this Weinmiller Lab 01. 
and we're going to save that. So that's my lab document that I'll be working with. Now, honestly, um, I get I get a little bit creeped out when I see pages alongside each other like that. So we're going to go ahead and get this down to a single page like that. What you're going to be pasting here are screenshots, and I'll teach you how to do that in a moment. Now you have three Microsoft Access databases. One is Madison County, Alabama, one is North America, and one is U.S. Sample Data. Just about every lab in the Introduction to GIS course uh, uses or mines U.S. Sample Data. So that's what's inside there. Um, it looks good, but we need to get this out of the zip file. Remember, we're looking at a zip folder that's extracted. So there's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to hit my Control key and A, and it, what that does, Control A selects everything that's inside the window or folder you're looking at. I'm going to then hit Control C, and that'll copy. Then I'm going to click on Y Miller Lab 1, left click here on the white space, and then Control V will paste those particular files into my folder. So now you'll notice that inside Y Miller Lab 1 are the contents of this particular zip file. That's what we want. Now, I really don't need this anymore, so I'm going to left click, then right click on it, and tell it to delete that. So this is what your folder should look like. We're ready to start the lab. So um, you can minimize this, and what we want to do now is we want to, so you understand the folder configurations. Everything is on C drive in a folder, your surname, lab one. It's imperative that you remember this and get this down um, so it's muscle memory. It shouldn't uh, even require any higher thought processes uh, other than um, the, the automatic responses that come out of your brainstem. Okay. Here's the GeoMedia Professional icon. Let's double left click on that to launch it. This will be a first launch in this environment. So we'll probably have to clean up some toolbars. And the first thing it's asking me is what I want to do. And what I want to do, this is a radio button. I want to left click in blank Geo Workspace radio button and click OK. What it's going to do is it's going to give me a blank map window, blank Geo Workspace. And you'll notice that I've got four rows of toolbars here, three uh, columns of toolbars there. We're going to fix all that. And we want to maximize this screen. So left click here to get full screen view. First thing I want you to do is these little bars that run vertical, you can grab a hold of by left clicking and holding, and you can move those tools around. So left click. Get those all up to where we're only going to have two rows on the upper menu of tools. Some of these tools we actually don't even use. Some of them I have never used. Okay, uh, here I like to have the lat one on the bottom toolbar right next to the map window. You can take this filter, put it right here. So we've got two there. Over here, these are grid and 3D tools. We can left click, get the bar there, which is now horizontal. Move it over, left click and drag that one down. And these won't light up actually, and will tell you have an image in the map window. So now we have toolbar here. This is a toolbar for feature editing. We have toolbars here which are for grid and GeoMedia 3D, and two rows of toolbars up here. I like this configuration. This is what I want your work to look like when I open it up. Now, um, GeoMedia that's running on the desktops in the lab is also uh, set up to uh, return to its original state. 
every time the machine is closed down. So you may have to go through this process of getting your window um, the way I want it every time you open up. The last thing we're going to do is drag that down. And the little delay here is because we're operating in a virtual space. Now you'll notice that, so I've got a huge map window here with all this white space. That's what you want with GIS. Now you notice that as I roll around, I get a little uh, double arrow here. If I left click and hold, it turns black and I can open up this left part, which is the legend. This is the display window, map window, legend. If there's nothing in the legend, there will be nothing in the map window. Now, if we roll across the top, the tools that you're going to be working with most often, zoom in, magnifying glass, zoom out. Zoom to nominal scale, you may or may not use very often. I, I use it rarely. Fit all, I use quite often. That'll take all the features that are in this map window if you're zoomed out to where they're centered here. If you hit fit all, They'll zoom out so that all the features are still contained within the window. None of them are outside the window, but there's no space between the borders of the map window and any features. This is pan. So once you left click on that, you can move the map objects around in the map display. And this is refresh. This is the normal um tool that you'll be using it's your select tool so you're going to be working mostly with select tool you'll notice that this says lon lat d colon m colon s that's longitude latitude degrees minutes and seconds so you'll notice that as i roll around in here these values change so this is longitude the first one in degrees minutes and seconds and uh, decimal places of the seconds. And this is latitude degrees, minutes, seconds, and um, portions of seconds. So you notice we're rolling around. There's really nothing in that map window, so it's like floating around in free space. It actually homes in um, just usually on primer meridian. Okay. If you left click on warehouse and go down to connections and left click, there are no connections. So we'll close that. So that means there's no data. In order to get data um, to display in the map window, we're gonna have to make a, a warehouse connection. So let's left click on warehouse, left click on new connection. We're gonna uh, connect to an access, Microsoft Access database. These are just the connection types. You can see there's quite a few of them. And the connection name, it says access connection one. We're gonna change that. I generally left click right to the left of the C and hold down my left clicker on my mouse and roll to the right and I'm gonna type US sample. That means that I'm gonna to connect to the US sample database. Why do I do this? Sometimes you'll have geo workspaces with uh, 10 warehouse connections. It's really nice when you can kind of have an idea in your mind before you dig into the features, what's inside there. Okay, so we've named it. Let's click on, left click on the browse button. Here's where you have to uh, develop muscle memory. No thinking. Geomedia, when it originally is installed on a computer, sets up two default locations for files. Um, it puts warehouses in C warehouses. It puts geo workspaces. Geo workspaces is what the environment we're working in right now, which is basically a template in C geo workspaces. That's not where we want to get our data, source our data from, nor do we want to save in this location. So we're going to left click on the drop down, left click on the C, and you're going to go to your folder. Double left click to open it. And there's US sample. Left click once to highlight it. Left click to open. So now we're in the correct place. C, Y Miller Lab 1, US sample data. OK. Nothing happened. Nothing happened because we still haven't displayed it. But if we go up to warehouse and left click on connections, now we have access US sample connections. Now, 
I wrote these labs, uh, some of them four or five years ago. And you'll notice that uh, you may run into something called read only. If I left click on this, I could basically close this connection so that you couldn't access the data in there. And then I could reopen it as read only. I could open as a read only. What that means is that any changes you make to the features that are in there, the map objects, you'll see what they are in a minute, the points, the lines, or the polygons, uh, will not be saved. They'll only exist as long as this geo workspace is open. Once you save it and close it, they're gone. It goes back to the original database. That's a measure of protection. Forget that I ever ask you to do that because you're always working in a protected um, warehouse anyways. It's a warehouse that's on your lab folder and it's what you want to do. It's where you want to make changes. So we'll close this a minute. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some legend entries. So in order to do that, you left click on the legend button up top, left click on add legend entries. You'll notice that the warehouse access you as sample as you named it's here, left click on the plus, if there's no plus, there are no features in there. What do we have inside here? We have point features that are cities. We have polygon or area features that are counties. We have point features that are highway interchanges. I never use those. We have interstates, which are line features. You notice that the symbol looks like what it represents in the real world. And we have line features that are rivers. We have a point feature that's a route shield, a text feature for state name labels, and a polygon for states. And then we have this US sample image, which is a raster uh, icon there for a raster image. I don't use US sample image. It's honestly ugly. It's projected at a particular projection that you can't warp. So it doesn't work very well in here. So we're going to put a left click and check cities, left click, check counties, left click, check rivers. Let's do interstates by left clicking and let's do states left click. So we're gonna display cities, counties, interstates, rivers, and states. And by the way, they will display at, um, at GeoMedia's whim with respect to the symbols. So left click, okay. And there they are. So now we have all these features in the map window, but they're in there at uh, sizes and colors that uh, do not comply with cartographic principles. The first one that I want to change is cities. And uh, notice here, this is the feature symbol. You may also call it legend symbol. This is the legend entry which defines and it honestly it agrees right now with the table name whatever the table's named that's what that feature's name this number over here is the number of cities in the u.s sample database 3702 we all know there's probably more than 3000 i know there is well maybe maybe close to 3702 cities in just in the state of alabama why is that well, the U.S. Sample Database is a free database provided by Intergraph with no guarantees as to its accuracy, completeness. Um, cities are only listed in this database if their population exceeds 10,000. There's only like 30 cities in the state of Alabama that have over 30,000 folks in them. Um, so, But there's a lot more cities in Alabama or towns or whatever you'd like to refer to them. Okay, we're going to change this. You double left click on the symbol. This is the legend entry properties window. And at right now it's five point. Let's left click and get that thing down to three. You notice it's a lot smaller. Leave the color the same. Click apply. It'll give you an idea of what it looks like. I don't, I don't think in this instance, for some reason, let's go to two. Better, apply, much better. Okay, so go to two and click okay. 
to make that final change. Interstates. I can't tell what's interstates. I can't tell what's counties. I can't tell what's states. Counties and state boundaries should never, ever be green. They should always be. I generally like political boundaries to be black or dark blue. So let's double left click on states. And uh, you'll notice these are purple. Let's left click on the purple button. Left click on zero black. Let's change the size here. You see the width? I'm going to left click in there, go to here, and type 0025. So it, the width is 0 0.0025, apply. And it rounded it up to 3. And for the fun of it, let's fill them. Now, what this is going to do is fill the polygons. Click apply, you'll see the difference, and OK. Now the states are filled. Now, a bit about hierarchy. The higher up in the legend entry, um, that's the value of um, its order in selectability. So if I push by left click and holding states, push it up once, you see the blue line, twice, three times, up above cities and let go, you can see nothing but states. Okay, let's go ahead and pull that down again by left click and hold, take it to the bottom, and let's get counties fixed. Double left click on counties. Um, we want those to be dark blue, and let's put 003, because it's going to do it in And there you go. So now you have counties on top of uh, states. Let's take care of interstates. Interstates, mm, I like them red. I just like to see them that way. So there's the interstate road system. Rivers naturally should be blue, some color of blue. I kind of like that color right there. So now we can see the rivers. I'm not so sure about the gray for states, but we'll take care of that later. As a matter of fact, uh, we're going to left click and hold and push that all the way up to the top now. So now we have states up there, and we want to add a label. So let's go ahead and add a state label. In order to do that, you go to Insert Label. You see it there? Left click. The Insert Label window comes up. And it asks, if you see this blue area like this, it's asking for you to provide it with some guidance. It needs to know what features. Features in US sample. And we're going to label states, not state name labels, states. Now, these are attributes. So map objects are features. And attributes are columns in the table that provide characteristics of those features. So if you were had a table that uh, was for cities and they were point features, you would have a lot of attributes that could be annual rain, annual snow, Asian population, um, the name of the city, lots of characteristics or attributes about them. So we're sliding down the attribute here. We don't want to label the states with um, education, college, educated graduate, educated high school, whatever, or his pop. We want state name. So you left click to highlight it. Now you notice this all lit up over here. Um, we're going to put it center center. That means that uh, the text node which is a point within the text feature, will center, center, center vertically, central, center horizontally on the centroid of the feature that you're dealing with, which is the center of the feature. Uh, the query name, this is a query. This is not an actual feature. It's going to be labels of states. We can actually make it a feature class, and there is good reason to do that if you have to move the feature, but we're not going to do that right now. Um, down here, style, if you left click on that box, 
And those kinds of functions are the same for a variety of Windows-driven programs. Here's the font style. Here's the font point size, and here's the color. We can bold it, italicize it, or underline it. First thing I'm going to do is get it down to about a six. You can see it's much smaller and make it bold. And then I'm gonna left click in there where it says Arial and I'm gonna type times. And I got to New Roman already. So left click on times New Roman. That's what it's gonna look like. Still a little big to me. So I'm gonna go down to five and let's go okay and okay. So now we have uh, state name labels on there. Pretty nice, huh? It gets a little messy up in here when you have small states all in a row, like New England. Now, here's the deal. We still can't see anything through here. Now, you see this circle around the pointer? That represents the snap tolerance. The minute that that circle touches a feature, um, the feature lights up. That's one good reason why you don't want to have anything green or light blue, because how can you tell a green or light blue feature when it's selected, when it's the same color as it is in its native state? So keep everything away from the green and the light blue, um, with the exception of something that makes total sense to be that way. So the other issue is, the further up in the hierarchy, the selectability is enhanced. So the top feature right now in the legend is label. So if I get close to the label, it's going to light up. You see that? As a matter of fact, the GIS is getting a little confused. Um, if I left click and I pull those down below the states, you couldn't see them. So we're going to leave it like that. But let's go over here to good old Alabama. Let it light up and double left click. And what that launches is the state's property window. And here's all the attributes about the state. Average temperature, annual rain, annual snow, medium age female, medium age male. Um, Intergraph gives us these data sets free. And I am pretty certain this is 2010, but I wouldn't hang my hat on it. Now, ultimately, Later in the course, you will be able to add attributes for information that you've gathered, or you'll be able to join to this table. There's lots of fun things we'll end up doing with this, but for now, I just wanted to show you that you can select that. We could select cities. So let's say we want our states to be up in the hierarchy, selectable. Um, but we want to see through them. We can do that with transparency by double left clicking on the symbol. And you see the translucency here? Let's just set that to about 75 by left clicking in there, apply. And now you notice we still have this gray shade to it, but we can see everything through there. If I say OK, you'll notice that the states still show up. And they're at the top of the hierarchy. Now, if I wanted to bore down through the states and get to something below it, I could do that. Here's how I would do that. I'd left click on this symbol and roll down to locatable off and left click. Now you notice the little arrow here? That means they're locatable. If they're not locatable, it means that uh, the GIS will not recognize them when you snap to them. You know, now you'll notice that I'm getting cities, which is the next level on the legend. And if I double left click, um, that's Yucca Valley, California. And here's the information on that. So you understand locatability. We turn locatable back on. We'll get to that much later. Okay. Um, so you've added legend entries, you understand the hierarchy. Um, let's go ahead and add a scale bar and a north arrow. Maps are not maps without scale bars and north arrows. So we're gonna do that by left clicking on view. The first thing we're gonna add is a north arrow by left clicking on north arrow. And by the way, you can double left click 
And there's lots of different styles of north arrows in there. You just have to experiment around with them. That one's ugly. Uh, you can get up into the roses in this, and they're pretty neat. Let's go ahead and choose that. A little bit big. Actually, I don't like that. Let's go back down here and get with that again. 72. Let's make this about 54. There you go. Now, if I left click and hold, I can move that around. Now we want a scale bar. View, scale bar. There's the scale bar. Some issues with this scale bar. Number one, it's ugly. Number two, it's in kilometers. In the United States, that's not the unit of measurement we're accustomed to. We, I, I, I wish the United States would adopt the metric system, but they won't. They're on the English system. They'll always be on the English system. We're rabble rousers. What can I say? So uh, in order to get this right, we'll double left click on that. We'll go into intervals and units. And these are kilometers. We'll go to miles. And then style. Let's give it some uh, bling by going with double block. Ooh, wow. Red. And we could actually change the font in here by going to labels and clicking font style. But I'm going to leave it go for now. I shouldn't, but I'm going to. And the reason I'm going to leave it go is because I'm lazy. I want to get to some other things. But anyways, there's your miles. Now, let's uh, just for the fun of it, zoom out by left clicking, put it right in the center and zoom out. Have you noticed that the scale bar changed? The units have changed. Let's go ahead and pan now and watch the arrow, the north arrow. The north arrow is moving around because of the projection. You're not, if you had the um, cartography course, by the way, if you're in a particular function, tool function, there's two ways out of this. You can see the little hand there. I can hit the escape and I'll get my, um, my, my regular select tool back. Or if I'm in there, I can right click and it goes away either way. Um, so that has to do with projection. What's projection? Projection is the way that we project a 3D surface onto a flat 2D surface. And we can preserve some of, but not all of area, shape, distance, and direction. So that's the short and sweet about that. And we'll get into that in a little bit later. Um, in another lecture. Now, fit all. Here's the fit screen, or fit all. Left click on that, and everything pops back out to normal. Get familiar with, become very familiar with uh, how to use these tools. For example, I'm going to zoom out once. Right click. Now, what I want to do is I want to zoom in till I get most of the east west distance in the map, but I'm going to leave a little space down here because I want my scale bar to be under the particular map. So I'm going to do this. So what's determining where this is placed in the map window is that bottom margin. There you go. Right click. And I can move that over there like that. I could actually left click and move it up a little bit. This looks too big yet. So we'll change that down to 44. Better. Okay. All right. So now we have this nice looking map window. Let's go ahead and put a title on here. Now, this is a little sticky. Um, but let's go ahead and do it anyways. In order to put a title on this map, we're going to have to use a text feature. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go to Warehouse, go down to Feature Class Definition. And by the way, what I'm demonstrating to you right now, some of this is not in the lab. I'm just going through and showing you how to do 
several operations. The lab's fairly self-explanatory, but I want you to work with me. Take this video, look at it, work along with me, and it'll make your lab cruise much easier. Okay, what we're going to do is we got Access US Sample, and I'm going to left click the new. Now I've got this new feature class, and I'm going to call this map underscore label. Brings up a point. No features or attributes can have spaces or operators in the names. So if you want a space, you have to put an underscore. What type of geometry is it? It's going to be text. This is the only projection so far. So we'll leave that like that. Click OK. Now, it always asks this question. Um, feature classes have to have a primary key. That's like, uh, do you want me to label all the rows in a table? And there could be hundreds of rows, for one for each feature. Do you want me to number them with a unique number? Yes. Uh, do you want me to do that, or should you do that? You want Geomedia to do it, so let it do it, and it's going to start at one and just number them up through. Just say yes, and now you now you notice there's map label. Close. Okay, this gets a little sticky, and I haven't done this uh, honestly in virtual space, so I don't know. It might get really sketchy. We're going to insert text. Okay. We get the insert text row here, and it'll pop back up when we're done. You get to pick the text. Map labels the one we just created. Now, if we don't override the style, it's going to be 10-point aerial center center. We can place it at an angle or anything. We want to override the style, and we want our map label to be about a 22. And aerial, I'm going to type T-I. Oops. Times New Roman. And I'm going to left click in this area right here where we're going to type. And I'll put it over here for now. Watch this. This is really cool. Oops. Other than that, it's huge. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to left click to place it there. And there's the unique ID value of one that we told it to go ahead and do. And you'll notice that I have another one ready to go. If I hit escape, I'm out of that. And what I can do now, because I think this is way too huge, I can go to um, edit text. What I really need to do is select this first and then go up to edit text. And you notice now 22, I'll change this back to about uh, 16. Better, better, better. Okay, now I'm going to left click and I'm going to go over to this bar right here, you see what that says? That's a little move. And now I can move this down to the bottom. Now that's a feature. This is not a feature. That's not a feature. That's a feature. So there's your uh, map window. Let's go ahead and change the projection. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to into view, Geo Workspace Coordinate System, left click. Right now, uh, this is the Geo Workspace Coordinate System. Do not worry about what all these mean right at the moment. All I want you to do is change projections. When I tell you to change projections, uh, to a particular projection, that's what I want you to change to. Now, we have like geographic, an option to change it to geographic. And the projection space doesn't light up because it's not a projection. And it's WGS84, which is the geodetic datum. That's the latest, most recent. We'll leave that go.
So general, geographic. Geographic is just a rectangular grid. If we, let's just, first of all, let's cancel this because I want to see what this is. I believe it's Albert's equal area view, georg space coordinates or cylindrical equirectangular. Albert's equal area is what it is now. We're going to get back to that. So let's go in there again, change it to geographic, pull this out of the way, and click OK. Look what happens to the map. So the way we convert from 3D to 2D uh, is changed dramatically. And remember I said geographically is a rectangular grid, so it means that the, uh, the meridians, which are the north-south running lines that demarcate longitude east-west direction, and the parallels, the east-west running lines that determine or delimit latitude north-south direction, are equal. That's not the way the world goes together. So it's actually stretching everything out to fit a rectangular grid. Now, let's go back into view, Geo Workspace Coordinate System, left click on projection, projection space. Let's go get Albers equal area again. Oops. Okay. It should pop right back into where it was. If I fit screen now, doesn't look too bad. Okay. Now, you're working along, and I asked you to make a screenshot. How do you make a screenshot? There are a ton of ways to do it. It depends on the computer. Um, I'm going to hit my function key, and I hope this works in the virtual space, and print screen on mine because function and print screen, print screen is considered function. Then I'm going to go open up my Word doc that remember we spaced to before, and I'm going to control V to paste. Let's see if that works. Probably not. Okay, let's try this. We'll try control alt print screen. That may not work either. Then let's go here, control V. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Isn't working. Okay, and we'll try one other thing. Uh... Let's see. If this has, yes, snipping tool. You're going to have to do your screenshots this way. Left click on snipping tool. Left click and hold the whole box down till you get all of the screen and let go. There's what we clipped. Open your Word doc. Let's go to page layout and get the orientation only. Now, leave it portrait. Okay, right click, paste, or let's try control V. There you go. You can control V to paste it. So there's a screenshot. Minimize that. You can close the snipping tool. You don't have to save it. Okay, so that's how you do a screenshot. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else we need to do for part A and B. No. So I think what we're going to do now is save this and uh, take a break for a while. So what do I want to do here? I want to go to File. I want to go to Save Geo Workspace. Remember the defaults. You want to go to your C drive, your lab folder, and you name this Wine Miller. Actually, name it your surname. It finds Wine Miller Lab 01A. Save. Okay, let's close this now. We've saved it. Let's close. Back to the desktop. 
Let's open our folder again. Now you notice that we have one Miller Lab 1A in here. And before we actually open that up, let's take a look at this. This is where we were working, US sample data. Let's see if this will launch. There's the counties table. There's the cities, 3,702, remember the counts. There's the states. Remember the, the feature, text feature we created? Right there it is, map label. We only have one right there. Let's close this. So, one thing I want you to understand is that GeoMedia works with those tables. Whatever you see in the map window is for your convenience only. Now, um, this is a nice folder, your job folder. Everything's in there. Um, let's go ahead and save this. see something here. I think I might have saved that somewhere I didn't want to. There it is. Why Miller in class? Why Miller Lab One? Open that up. File. Save as. And it's showing it. And aha. Uh -huh. We want to put that in C drive. I thought that went somewhere I didn't want it to go. And save it right there. Okay, good done. All right. So there it is. If we open that up, it should have our screenshot at the end. Yeah. And by the way, it's always nice to uh, put a little uh, explanation on there. Okay. Here's my point. When you save this, And looks exactly like you left it. Nothing's changed. What does that mean? What it means is that a geo workspace file, that's what you just clicked on, um, is the template for everything that goes on in this map window. Everything in this map window uh, is controlled by the template. So every time you launch a geo workspace, it goes out, grabs the data from wherever the data are stored, uh, brings them into the GeoMedia environment and displays them like uh, it is set up to display them. So everything is displayed uh, exactly like you left it. So let's close this. And shut up. Okay. Now, what do we want to do? What we want to do now is we want to uh, zip this up. So what I'm going to do is go to the C drive. And you'll see Weinmiller Lab 1. Okay. I want to copy that to the C drive on my computer. Okay, there's my computer. And I'm just going to open up another computer window. This is how I like to copy files around. For me, it's a great visual. Okay. Wine Miller, Wine Miller. I'm going to just drag it over there. So it's copying over and it's going to take forever. 
because it's yeah, it's not doing too bad, especially for AUM's uh, bandwidth. Not bad at all. So now I've protected this by putting it on my machine. Still taking a while. While it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click and let's see if this will work. Send to compressed. Okay. You see that? That's a zip file. What do zip files do? Zip files preserve the relationships between all of the contents, whether they be folders, files, or whatever, or even zip files. It preserves everything, all the relationships. So it preserves what's inside, what's inside, what's inside, so to speak. It preserves whether it's a folder, whether it's a file, whether it's a Microsoft Access database, it preserves all that. So that's what you're going to send me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send myself this as if it's finished. I'm going to go back to Blackboard. And I go to Mail. And you're looking at my inbox, so I'm just going to send a message to myself. Unload it. Uh, create message. Where does it go to? And you will put me and move me over there. Okay. Shut up. I already made this selection. You're going to put uh, a subject. Lab 01 part. Just type something like C attached. Scroll down. And you see attachment, browse. And we're going to go to the C drive. Scroll down and highlight the lab one zip file. And now it's highlighted. Click submit. Should take a while. Well, didn't take that long. Uh, I don't know if it happened or not. It looks like it went out. So when we get out of here, I'll continue to record for a moment and then we'll um, check and see if I received it on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to close Blackboard. Looks like we're still copying. I have no idea why it's taken so long other than that. Uh, it's just... Copying network. It's actually downloading now up to uh, my machine. So that takes a little while. And I think what we're going to do is... Um, boy, I hate to cancel this, but I hate to sit here for nine more minutes and be silent. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this video so you can have a look at this. And uh, maybe later this evening or tomorrow, I'll make something that will go through a lot of the questions, how to uh, respond to some of these questions that are in the lab exercise in part b part b will be working with madison county data uh, intergraph is in madison county alabama um, so they have a very complete database um, that contains lots of features from madison county alabama so a lot of what i will have you doing uh, measurements and all that will be taking place with uh, those data sets so that's the next thing we're going to do. So we'll sit here and watch this little arrow go across here for a moment. Um, I really want to make sure that you understand that patience is a virtue. 
and that we need to get these data sets over onto the Magellan side of the computer. If you don't do this, you suffer the risk of having um, your data sets deleted um, when this goes back into deep freeze. I haven't been told by IT that they're going to put deep freeze on the virtual units, but they may well do that. The reason is you saw the size of the C drives on here. They're not very big. After um, hundreds of students work on these machines, there'll be hundreds of students' files on there. So here's another uh, request. And if you don't do it, I'll get in there and do it. After you're done working with your um, with, the, with your folders on these computers, you're sure that you've copied your data over onto the C drive of your, your computer, your personal computer, delete your files. Now you can also plug in a jump drive onto your laptop or whatever you're working with it on your desktop, and you could copy your project files onto there as well. If you have a Dropbox account, you could upload those files to Dropbox. So you can, you can preserve your work in a lot of ways. What I'm telling you is you don't want to lose uh, the work you've done. And honestly, I will go through here and clean these machines up. We just can't have them um, loaded up with data. So we're about ready here to sign off. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, if it'll let me. I'm going to right click on that one and delete it. That's the original. No, nope, it won't let me do that one. But what it will do is let me delete this one. Still copying that one. And they go up into the recycle bin here. So once we're done with that, I ask you to clean the recycle bin up too. So we're almost ready here. Um, 60 seconds or less for man, if you know anything about computers. Those times that they give you up here, this could jump from 60 seconds back to half an hour, depending on the type of folder or file it's copying. If it hits an image file and it's a large image file, it'll slow down again. So it's uh, based on what it's doing at the time, what it's copying at the time. But this is about ready to go over and um, finish up here. It's the longest 15 seconds of your life you'll ever spend. It's watching that little blue bar go across there. We're just about ready. Okay, good. It's done. Right there it is. Let's take a look at it and see if it'll open up and show us. There it is. There's all our work in there. The Lab 1 Word doc, the original data, and our Geo Workspace. So we'll close that, right click on Wine Miller, delete, yes. So you've left this virtual machine um, in a nice shape for the next person. Right click on that empty recycle bin and clean it up. Please keep these machines clean. We're going to start here and we're going to log off. And we're going to close the client. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my computer, go to my C drive. And I'm going to look for that. There's the file I copied over. There's my work. I'm going to double left click and see what happens to this. This is the work we did in the virtual space. Would you look at that? It's exactly the same and um, flawless in the way it opened up. The only difference is a little bit of size difference on the uh, monitor size, but I'm very happy. <clears throat> if your data come across like that, I'd be very pleased. Now, the other thing I want to do, actually change this to A for the fun of it, and then I'm going to open up 
and I'm going to go to Blackboard. And let's see if we can. And we were in 3950. So let's see if our my letter to myself is there. So I'm going to save target, and I'm going to just uh, put it on the C drive. And what I'm going to demonstrate to you here is that, see, you're going to copy that folder back on your, your C drive, but what you're going to send me is this zip file. So I'm going to show you, demonstrate to you what I do with that zip file and why um, I want you to package it up correctly. Okay, so it's downloaded. I'm done with this. And right there it is. Double left click. There's the folder. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to copy. I'm going to go back to my C drive. Right click, paste. So I took what was zipped up and mailed to me through Blackboard. Double left click. This is as if you sent it to me. Double left click. Perfect. It worked perfect. And if I look on the Word doc, I don't need to enable editing. Right there's your screenshot. Flawless. If you complete the work like this, I'll be very happy. So that is basically all I have right at the moment. And I gotta get 